Hi, <clears throat> welcome to Operation End Times. I'm your Jedi warrior for Jesus, Ben Hellstead, and uh, we're going to continue the building the art, building the Ark series, part seven, Gopher Wood. Now, Gopher Wood, if you look into it, research it, say what is Gopher Wood, you'll find out there's no such thing as Gopher Wood. But that's what God told Noah to build the ark out of. Now, some people will say hey, gopher wood is the setter tree or it's the oak or it's whatever. But there's no tree called the gopher wood. And that's why I'll tell you what, my friends, you know, we're at a point in time, you know, the transition of the ages, the synchronicity of the ages. What I've been telling you is we're going from a linear line to the eternal model. So what you need to do is to be able to start stacking things up one upon the other, and it's not so much when they happen, but how many times they happen, and the time in between them happening, and what is it we're learning from these events happening. And you know, what you'll start seeing as you step back and see the forest through the trees is that it's all about manifesting the fullness of anything, any event, and life is a journey, and uh, we are the sum total of everything we see here, do, and experience. So. We all have a common thread of existence in that we all should be experiencing love and joy and compassion and yes, even hate and anger and, uh, you know, uh, tribulation, you know. <laughs> but, uh, basically, that's why it's important that you open your eyes, you become awake. To the eternal model and you free yourself Jesus will free you man <laughs> that's what Jesus does is he releases the prisoners but you step out of the 3d cube of the 3d world that we're living in and the box that's around your brain that doesn't allow you to see at a higher divine level to see the kingdom of God to tap into the divine circuitry of higher revelation and fullness of understanding and instead you stay on the 3D world and you think you're seeing fullness at the 3D level. Or worse yet, you go down into the abyss for dark knowledge and you think you're seeing fullness. But what I will tell you, my friends, is in the abyss, you're full on blind, the dark, stumbling and bumbling. On the dry land, which is the mid-ground between the deep waters and the waters above in the heavens. That's the shadow land, the dry land, where both evil and good exist and battle against one another. And then, if you can rise up, you know, through knowledge and learning, you know, the 153 of Jesus Christ, you know, teach, learn, and grow and reach a higher level of understanding, a more divine, because it's light that's coming into your brain, truth and love. And that will always be the fullest understanding and reflection of whatever it is you're looking at. So if you ain't seeing it in light and love, then you ain't seeing the fullness of it. But anyway, in this, these ages, you know, uh, that's why we're kind of looking at the, uh, the family trees and the lineage uh, as laid out in the Bible and other historical books. And we're going to keep looking at that because there's still more information, dark secrets and uh, things that I'm going to reveal to you in a powerful way, looking at Adam on down through Abraham, down through Christ, you know. But, uh, you know, where we're at today is we kind of got to Abraham where he was married to a princess, Sarah. We don't know who her mother was. But what we can start seeing is that you know, circle is a, a time is a circle, and we can start stacking up. And there's a repetitive uh, events, and uh, the way I would explain it, uh, you know, in the heavenly realms, we like using water to describe things. And indeed, this event, when it happens, is waters from above meeting waters from below. But the Spirit of God is like water. It flows out, the Spirit of Truth. Uh, life is like uh, a big lake that you drop a, a pebble into. That's your life, and it ripples out. And that's the effect your life has on the uh, infinite flow of the waters upon reality. And, you know, in Genesis, it even says, the Spirit of God whew, blew across the waters. So, you know, most churches... 
They'll start you off when you're a spiritual baby. They'll say you need to repent and pray to God for forgiveness and humble yourself. And you know what that is? So absolutely correct. And, uh, you know, the equivalence, the repentance cycle is like a wash cycle because you're washing yourself, mind, body, and spirit. They even use uh, analogies of your raiment. Your clothes are filthy rags. They go through the wash cycle and God, Jesus, makes your clothes clean and you get a white robe to wear in righteousness. But, you know, that's what you teach spiritual babies, that you need to wash yourself because babies, you know, most often are wearing diapers and have crapped in their diapers, so you got to clean up their diapers. So you teach them the... the the wash cycle of repentance. My problem with churches is they never seem to really move beyond that, you know. Every week it's just doing the laundry in church, you know. And if, if you as a spiritual ba a spiritual person, if you never grow up and learn to walk and you remain a spiritual baby, and that's what ch churches do is they box your mind in and try and keep you as a baby, uh, then you're just you know, staggering along like a little two-year-old baby, crapping in your diapers and washing them. That's all you ever do in your spiritual life. And I will just tell you, God and Jesus want so much more out of you than to just be a baby crapping in your diaper. Okay? So, um, from the micro to the macro, you know, a baby crapping in your diaper, but let's blow it up to the macro level. This event that keeps happening time and time again at the end of the ages is like a big, super huge wash cycle where the finger of God comes down and flicks a switch and turns on the washing machine. I kind of drew a little picture of it right here. Let's see if we can get it to come in. But uh, over, over, over here is the finger of God coming down to hit the switch. The earth is like a big washing machine. The waters come down and the, the waters from the deep come up. And in the middle is the tur the, 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 the turbulent waters, which uh, is the troubled waters. And guess what? They can either bring death and destruction or they can bring healing, you know? But the waters above are the heavenly waters. And on the dry land is the behemoth, you know, which is the beast, the giant ego of man. Uh... The waters below, the deep waters, that's where the Leviathan is, or the whale, the whale that swallowed Jonah. You know, Jonah was healed and he was blown out the blowhole, but guess what? You could get stuck in the whale and never come out. But the behemoth is male, the male ego, the Leviathan, the deep, the abyss, is female. But this event happens again and again and again and again. It happened before Noah at the flood of Gihon. It happened at Noah. It happened when the children of Israel crossed the, the Red Sea. It happened when Jesus walked out on, on, on the waters. It happened when King David crossed back across the Jordan. So if we stack up all these events, these big, bigger macro events of washing with waters and, and look at what's going down, what you can actually see, just like when you turn on a wash cycle at your house, it goes through a cycle, a sequence of washings where there's rinsing, soaping, draining, you know, and when we're looking at the end times, you know, those that are kind of looking at the dark side, the, the uh, event sequence is both positive and negative. It's easy to kind of see the negative, and we all look at the darkness. That's the four horsemen, where the building of a temple, the arrival of the Antichrist, but it's also when the switch is turned, uh, the dark spirit within people is turned on or up and their desires are manifested tenfold on the 3D level of existence. Likewise, when the switch is thrown, for the people who are positive, walking in light, their desires are turned off and their light is turned up. Their 3D desires are turned down. And, uh, the, when the switch is thrown, it's like a wash cycle, it's a wave, it's an event, it's a circuit, positive to negative, the male, the upper waters connecting with the female, the lower waters, and a circuit is connected, and energies are exchanged, and whether you're in the dark waters, or you're above in, in the light, in the ark, floating above the earth, events are unfolding. You know, Noah, when they were all in that ark, they were in the wash cycle, being terrified as they were being tossed about in the washing machine, but they could all look through the window in the top of the ark. So everybody that was in the ark was of one accord, looking towards the heavenly light, towards God to guide, to blow into their sails, and to land them on the distant shore. But the switch, when it's thrown, there's a dart to the heart, to the dark side. You know, that's how Absalom died. Three darts were thrown into him. Uh, but the sequence of events for the light 
You know, I, I told you, for the dark side, it's like Revelations, the Four Horsemen, war, destruction. But on the light side, there's a sequence of events, my friends, and that's what we've been talking about. It's preparing, building, learning to walk, learning to step out in faith like Abraham, you know, or Peter out of the boat. And what you find out is what's part of the sequence is God meets us halfway, just like Jesus met them halfway. Uh, King David came out halfway. Melchizedek came out to meet Abraham. And that is why we're kind of looking at all these events of the past, is to understand the nature of the event. When the switch is thrown in our times, what is it going to uh, unfold? Now, I'll read you a uh, Bible verse. This is Isaiah 29, starting with uh, 29 verse 9. Stay yourselves and wonder, cry ye out and cry. Why? Why? Because you're in darkness. You're like Jonah. You're in the belly of the whale. They are drunken, but not with wine. Noah was drunken with wine. These people, the dark side, they're drunken with the spirit of darkness. They stagger, but not with strong drink. They're blind. If you're in the abyss, you're blind. Both eyes are blind. Isaiah 29, 10. And this is when the switch is thrown. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of the deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers. He hath covered the covering. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to me that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. So even the guy that thinks he's learned cannot read the book which is sealed. So the dark knowledge of the abyss does not open your eyes, does not give you the ability to read the book. Wherefore, the Lord said, For as much... Oh, uh, the vision of all... Uh, the vision of all has become to you as the words of a book that is sealed, uh, and the book is then delivered to somebody that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he says, I'm not learned, I can't read it either. So the learned and the non-learned, nobody can read the book that is sealed up. And in Revelation, there is a book that is unsealed. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips and do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. Men are the ones that are saying, Fear God! You know, Jesus said, Love God. So the two-faced God, the one that everybody's scared shitless of, that's a fake God. You know, the real God is love. Therefore, Isaiah 29, 14, Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work, and that is what is going to unfold, my friends, among the people. Even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep, the word deep, I'm going to explain that, we're almost out of time here, but to hide their counsel from the Lord and their works are in the dark, and they, they say, who can see us? Who knows us? God can see all. Surely your turning things upside down shall be esteemed for, for as the potter's clay. For shall the work of, say, him that made it, he, he made me not. Or shall the things framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding. It is not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. The tables will be turned, my friends. But if you're on the evil dark side... Your own darkness is going to work against you. And that's the secret. God doesn't destroy all these people. They destroy themselves. But it's when the switch is, is thrown. Um, uh, just kind of going back into it, the word the deep. I found three meanings of it. The first meaning is deep, deep sleep. That's the, the trance-like state. Hebrews H 8639, Tardama. It also means to dart it sounds like, Tadarmar sounds like the dart home, which Methuselah, his name was Dart, but the dart is in the darkness. It's what kills the darkness. It's the dart that killed Absalom. But there's also the deep waters, the abyss, the grave, Hebrews 84.15, Tehom, but it's female. And uh, there's also the blessings of the deep found in like Genesis 49.25, where the deep blessings are, are mentioned. But that's... Uh, Hebrew, it's Shad. Hebrews, uh, I didn't mark down the word, but it's mentioned 44 times in the Bible, and the root word is mentioned 16 times. Uh, the deep, Amak, which is uh, Hebrews 6.13, which means to shoot, the dart. It means inward, the mystery, the mystery, the inward mystery of the heart and the mind and the soul. H6013, the deep. 
And that, my friends, is what's unfolding because the deep, the blessings of the deep is the blessings of the breast and the womb. And that is where the female and the male, the dark water's coming up and the light water's coming down, is the ultimate consummation and birth of the kingdom of God, my friends. All right. God bless you. This is Operation End Times. I'm your Jedi Warrior for Jesus. This is Building the Ark. Go for Wood. Stay tuned. I got more coming at you, hopefully today. <laughs>